Hi everybody, Susie Dingle here coming to you from my writing and gardening studio. These books are very important if you're a new gardener, beginning gardener, and some of them I have had from the very beginning of my gardening, serious gardening career, and others I have collected since then, and I wish I would have known about back when I was first starting out. So I'd like to share some of these books with you and if you are a beginning gardener or perhaps you know one and you want to give them a gift, this might give you some ideas of what sort of books would be helpful for them. I'm looking for one more book and it's right here in the science category. I'm very happy with myself because this was hard to actually create these categories and then choose the books, but we've got nine categories and then a bonus one. This is general gardening, just a basic, good, general information on gardening and then zeroing in on the things that happen when you're gardening, what to look out for and how to fix things. Design, getting you all inspired and then actually drilling down on that once you start to figure out your style. Then we're going over here to the actual plants themselves. This is very important. And then how you combine those plants, hardscape, which often gets put at the end, but should be thought about pretty early on. Then a special category for edibles and science. And at the end, I'll talk about these books over here. I get most of my books secondhand at Half Price Books. That's one of my favorite places. And I will leave the information for these books down in the description area for as many as I can. And if they aren't there, then check back because it may take me a while to get them all in there. And let's get right into it, okay? The science category. I wish I had had these two books when I was first starting out. How Plants Work by Linda, she's a doctor, a PhD, Linda Chalker Scott. She's a horticulturist. And The Gardener's Weather Bible by Sally Roth. Both of these are really easy to read. They've made them quite in layman's terms. Not a lot of pictures, but tons of information and you won't regret it. Oh, this one has more pictures than I remember. You won't regret it you will understand so much better what plants need and how to grow them because you understand how they think and behave. And this is just the most fun book of all, the Weather Bible. Next, we look at the general gardening books, just overall. And these usually, these kind of books have a smattering of how do you grow something? How do you prepare the soil? How do you prune? Uh, how do you how do you um, start from seed, that sort of thing. How do you pick out your plants? So they all vary, but here's what I really love is having one that's specific to the area you live in. And this is the Northwest for me. So I, my go-to author on that is Anne Lovejoy. She knows what she's doing. An amazing person. So the Anne Lovejoy Book of Northwest Gardening. If you're here in the Northwest, she is uh, sustainably based, organic. Also another really great gardener. I, I have met her in person. I like her a lot. I've also met Anne Lovejoy. But the Garden Primer by Barbara Damrosh. I really love everything she's written. And this is, again, another wonderful, just the Bible. So... <laughs> for gardening. It, it's got more information in here than you will probably ever want to know, but maybe not. Then if you're in for a little smaller book and a quicker, easier read, this garden series, and I've talked about this doctor before. I think it's Haseon. This is the Garden Revival Expert book in his series of many, many different types of books. And I, I like every one he's done. But this one maybe is more for someone who's really just starting out. And they're, they, you don't want to overwhelm them or you don't want to be overwhelmed. Let's put it that way. 
uh, what I like about this one is that there's pictures and diagrams, and I'll show you more about that in in another book that I really like for that reason. But you're just going to get a lay of the land, so to speak, about gardening. And then one more, if you can find it, the Rodale's Illustrated Encyclopedia of Organic Gardening. And again, it's, it's like those other two other books I showed you that are really uh, big books. It's going to give you a smattering of everything. It just wets your whistle and gets you up to speed. It's like going to college and taking a Gardening 101 class. To overcome my lack of confidence when I was first starting out, I relied heavily on books like this that solve specific problems with diseases and bugs and if a pruning problem happened or if seeds died, whatever it was. So this particular book is wonderful. And it's specific to the western uh, part of the state, but you can find others that are similar to this. Another one that was specific to my area is this landscape plant problem, and I love it. It was done by the Washington State University Extension, so you could look at your state extension and see if they have something similar to this. It gets into the nitty-gritty. This helped me out a lot because I... I was just like almost petrified of growing things and then having them get diseased and problems like that. So look for something like that in your own area. As far as pruning goes, that's universal. This is a wonderful book by Cass Turnbull. Sadly, she's no longer uh, alive. And so she's left the, us with these amazing books. She has several of them. Uh, the Complete Guide to Landscape Design, Renovation, and Maintenance. Look for that. It's got fabulous diagrams and a lot of wisdom from all of her years of experience. If you like propagating, I do have a separate video on propagation books, but this particular one here, Plant Propagation, and I'll leave the, I'll try and leave the information for it specifically. I can't see the author on that one right now, but it's listed in my plant propagation video. And then another one on pruning. In case the one that Cass Turnbull is not quite your thing, this one, Christopher Bricknell, Pruning, a very, very good book on basic pruning. A beginning gardener would have a, a wonderful time learning from this book. Easy to read. Okay, let's go on to the next category. Now that you're very confident that you can uh, put a garden in, let's start dreaming about it. I love every single one of my design books, so this was hard to choose, but I was trying to remember what it was like when I was first starting out. And these are just general design books. This, I think it's really good to have a before and after book of some kind just to show you what's possible and I like this sunset one a lot. This goes through a lot of the types of conditions that most uh, homeowners have so I highly recommend it and the pictures are really lovely and good information. Now most of us you just you know when we start from scratch oh my gosh that can be just so intimidating but this one the garden planner by Robin Williams is one of my favorites. It's, just, it's very dog-eared. But what I like about, okay, so here's a category opens right up to the informal garden. He has beautiful diagrams and then goes into specifics about it and also has photographs. And he goes through many of the different kinds of shapes of gardens. So this can be extremely helpful and maybe you'll see something in there that is similar to your garden. Then this is also a general uh, design garden book to just get you dreaming. Theme Gardens, again by Dam Barbara Damrosh. I really love her work. Oh my gosh, she's an accomplished gardener. Look at these beautiful uh, illustrations and then details about each of the plants. Now what I love about this book is it not only gives you an idea 
of what the garden could look like, but it also educates you on the plants themselves. So, and not overly so, just enough. She just hits on all cylinders here, just the right tone and everything. Beautiful designs, beautiful, beautiful designs. Now, if I had just one gardening book, uh, design book, I think it'd have to be this one. Reader's Digest Guide to Creative Gardening. If I was starting out, let's just put it that way. Maybe not today, I'd have to think about that. The reason why I like this book so much is because it has photographs and it has illustrations and I believe it even has some line drawings. But it, and it also goes through the plants, specifically the plants. It is so well organized. It's organized by perennials and annuals and roses. And so you can kind of zero in on what sort of plants you like and then see how you can design with them. I just have spent hours in this book. I absolutely love it. Now this one, even though I haven't used it as much as me because I got it later on in my career, but I go to it quite a bit. The Garden Design and Decorating, Peter McCoy and uh, Tessa e Everly. I like it a lot. And I think what it does is it is very just um, enticing for a new gardener. It's very clear. The diagrams, these are probably CAD diagrams done with color. They're very nice. I love how they've used the uh, the different kinds of accessories. It goes through hardscapes. Just many redeeming features in this book. A lot of eye candy, but it's accompanied by useful information. So there we go. Yeah, that one's good. Okay, coming up on Bunny, Bunny Guinness. She has her own YouTube channel now, which is like a blessing. Thank you, Bunny. Garden Transformations. Oh my goodness. This is more specific to her style and not just every style, but you won't regret seeing this book. I tell you, it is as far as a design book getting you going what's possible and what she's done she's i believe she's done chelsea the chelsea garden show probably multiple times but oh my goodness she's she's a blessing to the gardening world and this one for those of you who are impatient or know someone who's impatient i have used this book so much shortcuts to great gardens Nigel Colborn, and he's, he means it. This is truth in advertising. These plants and the way that he suggests you get your garden going can get you a mature looking garden very early. So that's a good thing. I've used his techniques mixed in with um, other techniques and blended the two together and it's worked out very well. And then specific to my area, the Northwest, is this one, Gardening in the Northwest. And is it, yeah, it's a sunset book. It's wonderful. It's a general gardening book that's sort of theme driven, but again, it kind of gives you an idea of what is possible. So if you're in the Northwest, great. And I don't know if other areas have similar, maybe there's similar types of books in other areas. I love this one a lot and I, I just sit and look at the pages especially during the dreary parts of our gardening year. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these books but just know once you have decided on a style you can start to look for specific design books. I really like these, The Romantic Garden, Graham Rose, the Wild Garden, Cultivating Sacred Space. I'm going to do a whole video on that book and other books like it. Gardening with Herbs and Scent in Your Garden. So these are the books that I used early on to help me zero in on what my design style was and cultivating that. All of them have a similar format to the other books, design books, but they just um, come in close, up close and personal with this 
whatever the particular design theme is. Well, once you know basically what you want to grow, how do you grow it? How do you get to know the plants? Well, this book series, The Taylor Guide to Trees, this one is bulbs, even though you can't read it, ground covers, perennials, annuals, and vegetables, has been uh, just, I, I guess I know what I know in large part to this series of books. I absolutely love it. There's pictures and there's also detailed information about all of the plants. Can't say enough good things about this series. I really need to get a second copy of this book, Right Plant, Right Place. That This book was the first, I believe the first, in this concept. And it's by Nicola Ferguson. It, if you understand this concept of where a plant originated from and what conditions, and then you can learn a lot about how, see, <laughs> look, it's falling apart. I need a book binder. I need another copy. Anyway, this will teach you about the origin of plants, and there's just tons of information and where to put them in your garden and how to be successful with them. Highly recommend this book or something like it. But that, that one is, has never failed me. I am so glad I invested in this book, Trees and Shrubs. It was very pricey. I believe I got it from Barnes & Noble. I know less about trees than I do about any other category of plants. And so I go to this all the time for learning about them. It covers just about everything, I'm sure, in all over the globe. So even though it was, I think I paid probably about $60 for it, but don't regret it. Look for it. I'll leave the information down below because I'm not seeing even the publisher, so I'll, I'll tuck that down in the description area. So you've figured out your design style, you've looked at the plants, you know you want to grow them, and then you say, huh? I see the pictures, but how do I still put them together? What's going to look good? Are they going to be good companions next to each other? These are the books I've relied on. And I'm going to take you through these one by one because they are so amazing. First, let's start with foliage. Okay. Foliage. A lot of people, that's a big thing now. It didn't used to be. And this book by David Joyce. Yeah is the best one I've found. And maybe there's more out there now. I don't know. Because I did quit buying books at a certain, uh, new books at a certain point. It takes a lot to get me to buy a new book. But this book goes through the attributes, the uh, fine, fine qualities of each plant that is, and it does it by category. So here, these are hairy and bristly foliage. Tough and leathery foliage, feathers and filigree. You get the gist? It goes through the texture and the quality, the shininess, the um, flexibility of the plant, variegation, the sheen of the plant. And it goes through that and it tells, gives you examples of plants in that category. And then it shows you how to combine them. Also the shape of the plant, the structure. Oh, I love this book so much. It's so inspiring. I'm sure before long you will be dreaming up your own combinations of things. And you can see how colorful foliage is. A lot of people feel that they hardly need any flowers or bark or anything else because the foliage is so exciting and vibrant and high visual impact, as we say in the, in the trade. Here's my next one that I like so much. Better Homes and Gardens, Choosing Plant Combos, Combinations. Yeah, this is really, really good. See, I've made notes on the front of combinations that I particularly want to try that I've thought of. Again, this one goes through different attributes. And, I mean, you can see, look, I'll just let you take that in for a moment. How amazing. Encourage curiosity. I... This is such just a creative and exciting book. I've just decided that this book is like reading a romance novel. It's a love affair with 
between plants. That's what this is. Okay. Enjoy your reading. Make joyful color associations. Seek relationships of tone. Along that line is The Bold and Brilliant Garden by Sarah Raven. And it took me a long time to get this hardbound book. I hope you can find one because it is worth it. Yes, it's bold, it's brilliant, but it gives you also some basic information on how to put plants together. And what I like about this is she goes through the different times, the different seasons. So early summer planting in damp ground, or then early summer in sunny ground or sh shady ground. And she goes through all the plants that she uses in those situations. And it's, and again, she gives also you know, great information on caring for those plants. But this alone could get you thinking, okay, what would my garden be like? Uh, how could I combine things at different times of the year? Maybe you choose a different colorway. That would work. But at least it gives you that concept of how do you combine things, the shapes, the textures, the different colors. Speaking of color, let's go on to the next book. This is fun. Remember those flippy books, you guys, when you were a kid, or maybe you still use them, where you could create different people out of, um, you know, they had different pictures. It was in thirds, like this is this book is cut into thirds. There's the top, middle, and bottom. So you could have a fireman top, a ballerina middle, and a, uh, I don't know, a <laughs> something else on the bottom. This goes through the different plant colors, different types of plants, and then on the back, it tells you what the plant itself is. There's the front, there's the plant, here's the back, and tells you about it. So, what a fun book. I mean, just endless combination and mindless fun flipping through here. Just had to show you this because it's unique. I've never seen anything like it. I actually have two of them because I was worried that it would go out of print. The Garden Color Book by Paul Williams. Thank you, Paul Williams. Very, very fun. Moving right along to Hardscapes, Patio and Stone and Sunset Design Guide. Really good. They mean it. Inspiration and expert advice. Yeah. Stone, if you want stone in your garden, then check out this book. It's really good. It gives you design ideas, but specifics of how to work with it. And this particular uh, uh, version has, I believe, yeah, a CD in it, which was really cool. So highly recommend that book. And then, you know, hardscapes don't have to be just stone. And this, this book, I've never seen anything quite like it. It's very creative. Hardscape. By Anne Marie Powell. It goes, it's, it's just very creative, artistic, let's put it that way. It goes into the different materials, but also gives beautiful examples of how to use those materials. Yeah, a lot of it's high design, okay, but it's still inspiring. Have fun with that. There's plenty of books on hardscape, but I don't think you can go wrong with these two. This is a trusted company as far as giving information to Sunset. And then this is truly, she says, innovative, and it is innovative. Edible landscaping. This is probably my third copy. And finally, oh look, it belonged to somebody else there. Always buying used copies. Yeah, not as, uh, you know, colorful. It's an older style book, but boy, does it give you information on how to take pl edible plants and use them, design with them. There's a diagram, there's the illustration, and there's pictures. Roslyn, I think her name is pronounced. She's just a master in this, and I love everything she's done. 
highly recommend this book. It's not just vegetables. It is other plants, you know, trees and shrubs and such, ground covers that are edible. And in fact, let's just get to her other two books that I have that I love. The Edible Salad Garden and the Edible Flower Garden. So edible, edible flowers themselves. These are more like glossy, pretty picture books, but still loads of information. Love those books. Very inspiring. Now, this book here, I think it's pronounced Gaia's Garden, A Guide to Permaculture by Toby Hemin, Hemin, Hemingway. Hemingway? All right. I did buy this one new right when it first came out. Okay, there you go. Chock full of everything you want to know about permaculture. What's permaculture? Well, I encourage you to look it up. It really stands for permanent agriculture. It's more than just edibles. It's how to make your whole garden work together. It's the web of nature and how to make a healthy garden for everyone involved. Uh, the, the planet, us, the creatures, etc. But here you go. If you want to just do vegetable gardening, he's a master. Uh, Four Season Harvest by Elliot Coleman. Happens to be married to Barbara Damrosh. Boy, his techniques are amazing for extending the season. So do look into this book if you want to get the most out of your gardening year and you live in a colder climate. Okay, that's really a great, great book. One more category, and it's over there. These two books are treasures to me, and I want to talk about when a book becomes a treasure. If you are giving a book to someone, and it's special, and that's part, partly the reason why I made this video, to help people select books as a gift, remember that you have the ability to um, extend your love to them through this book, through an inscription, or just a message of encouragement, something like that. My mother gave me this book when I was first gardening, and her inscription in the front was so dear. And I read it, especially when I miss her. It says, to my dearest and most wonderful wildflower of all, I love you, Mama. Who doesn't want to hear something like that? And then this book underneath it is... My, my most, these two here are my most prized possessions with books because they're sentimental. This was given to me by my husband. Uh, we were in Yosemite and it was a very expensive book, but it goes through all of the plants of Yosemite. And Yosemite goes from a very low level, I think it's 2,000 or 3,000 feet up to probably 11,000. So you're gonna get plants of all different kinds Actually, I could probably just have this plant book and know most of everything I need to know about native plants in the um, my area, certainly, and really across a lot of America, because a lot of the plants that are native in uh, the United States grow in Yosemite. It's just a, a beautiful book, and it means a whole lot to me. Now, I'm not trying to tell you what book to give that would be an encouraging or inspiring book uh, for someone, you have to select that. If you are going to give someone a book as a gift, I encourage you to not worry so much about the type of book it is, but perhaps concentrate on the inscription and you can give them a special message of how much they mean to you and how much perhaps you hope they enjoy the book that you so thoughtfully chose for them. I hope this tour of these books has been helpful for you. And until next time, keep dreaming in the garden.